The Alfa Romeo Milano is the most controversial car of this decade, hands down. And this is why the Milanese brand has broken the internet. What's good guys, welcome back to Ron's Rise, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another video. You guys can probably see the stress in my face. There will be some B-roll footage in here, I promise. So it's been a wild 24 hours, actually a wild 48 hours by the time you're seeing this. Uh, because the Milano has broken cover. And I feel like it was supposed to be a celebration of an Alfa Romeo release, but it's been more controversy than anything. And I've been reading your comments, the forums, the Facebook posts, the Instagram posts, the comments in my video. I released two videos on the Milano, the official debut, and also the configurator specking out the new Milano. I read all the comments, or as much as I can. I'm stressed out, guys. I'm overwhelmed. This is supposed to be a celebration of a car, but it's more controversy around the car than anything. Now this is more controversy than BMW's big wide nose pig grills that they switched over for the front fascia. This is more controversy than Mercedes when they had the whole egg shape, you know, EV, EQS things that they're doing. This could be even more controversy than Marquez Brownlee tanking the stock of Fisker by reviewing one of their cars and saying it's the worst cars he's ever reviewed. I mean, you would think that the big controversy would be is it's an EV. I mean, obviously there's a hybrid powertrain too, but we saw the EV and obviously it's a big, big deal. I mean, this is Alfa Romeo's first EV. You never thought you would see Alfa Romeo come out with an EV. We talked about it, we knew it was coming, but to see Alfa Romeo's first EV ever is crazy. Mentioning Alfa Romeo and electric vehicle in the same sentence, but that's not even a controversy. That's, people didn't even really talk about that. They talked about the looks and styling of the car. And even, we had controversy about the name. Um, let's talk about this because again, I'm not here to bash the car, I'm not here to defend it. I'm here to talk about what my thoughts are, my initial thoughts, my likes and dislikes about the car. Um, and just give my transparent views as I always have and Alfa Romeo has freely let me do. Um, because passionate about the brand, love the brand, obviously nothing is perfect. So we always talk about what we like and what we feel like we would change. So my opinion is just my opinion. You guys can drop yours down in the comments below. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a lot of things to say. And I told you guys in my previous video that I would leave you an outlet to do that. So free speech, right? Now, aside from the styling and stuff, we'll get to that in just a moment. We already thought that the name Milano, once it was revealed probably, what, a month and a half ago or so now, um, or a little bit, a little bit further than that. We thought that that was pretty different. We were thinking like, okay, when you say Milano, it's Italy, right? It's, it's Italian. It's pure, just, you know, I guess celebration of Italy and everything the Alfa Romeo stands for. And we thought that for a BSUV, well, mm, I get it because it's fully electric is the evolution. And obviously it's the next design language for Alfa, but we thought it was going to be Brunero. And the English translation translated to Brenner, and that didn't sound too great, but it doesn't matter because we weren't expecting it to come to the US or North America anyways. So with it being over there, Brunero sounded perfect, right? We would think that Milano would be like on a GTV 60-esque halo car, right? Well, it's come to my um, knowledge that just recently, um, the Minister of Business talked about the Milano not being able to be called the Milano because it's made in Poland. So something going on with some law back in 2003 um, over there overseas in Europe um, that you can't necessarily call the car Milano but have it built in Poland. Listen, it's built on the same platform as a Jeep Avenger. Um, what's the other one? I forgot already. but. Either way, Alfa Romeo would deal with all that stuff. I'm not exactly sure how legit that is or if that's a real thing, but that was an article that came out earlier this morning, which was less than a day after the full reveal. Now, the looks. You guys have been giving it to Alfa and this whole car in the comments, and it's been a lot, man. I'm telling you, it's very overwhelming because I love the brand, and it sucks seeing some of the comments that I have been seeing. Um, and the memes and everything moving forward. A lot of you guys are saying the French connection really kind of showing its way here, um, but it's not as much Italian design. So like for me, I feel like if that's the case, you know, um, think about a regular font and then think about italicized, you know, like an italics. Alfa Romeo version or, you know, the Italian version adds that extra flair, that extra this and that, that gives it something that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have without the Italian style to it. So it adds that pizzazz, 
that flavor, that piece of art to it. So if it does take from, you know, Citroën or Peugeot or even DS Automobiles, um, I definitely feel like Alfa Romeo put their own spin to it and made it look great. But with that said, there are some things that I really like and some things that I will probably change. Now, let's talk about what I love because I made this very, very known in a configurator video when I posted the seats. I'm sorry, this is gonna be my controversial uh, take. The seats, the sport bucket seats, look better to me than the current Sparkle carbon fiber racing seats. And obviously these built by, built by Sabelt for the new uh, seats, obviously they got some good competition, but those seats look so incredible. I love the way that those just kind of as, I mean, it like it completely changes the interior of the car to me. And with that said, I almost wish that they would have saved that for uh, the Julia and Stelvio Quadrifoglio because those are crazy for that kind of car in that segment. Um, so that is the biggest thing that I love about the interior. Obviously, you got a different styling cues like the Serpent and the grills um, and on the side of the airbags and the, the dash area. Um, you got the start-stop button, not on the steering wheel, which is obviously, um, you know, a departure from what we're used to from Alfa Romeo. So that is definitely going to take some getting used to with the start-stop button being in the center console. So um, you know, moving forward with that, I definitely think, man, that's going to be one big controversial one uh, moving forward. But other than that, the interior looks pretty good. Looks how you would think it would for that segment. And really the seats stand out to me the most for the thing that I love. And the thing I would change is I would put that start stop button back on the steering wheel. And then let's talk about the actual front fascia itself. Now, I definitely feel like they could have done without the black bits underneath the headlights and just had the big massive grill with the Scudetto and the side venting there. And again, I'm not the architect or designer here. Um, I just put it in my opinions. I definitely think it could have done just as well without that. Um, but it doesn't look bad with it. But again, I know it's it's pretty busy and a lot going on. And you're kind of kind of kind of trying to figure out where to look at and where the design begins and ends with the front fascia. But again, my take here, the front Scudetto looks better with the Serpent in it. And I know a lot of people don't like that as much. And I'm not exactly sure about the script in this in the actual Scudetto uh, for that one. The side, well, the side, I love the wheels and I love the Serpent and the C pillar. Everything else is pretty, pretty chill. And the back will take some getting used to, but it doesn't look bad at all. Um, it's just something that's completely different from what we know from Alpha. I still feel like in this segment, this is probably still the best looking car in this segment. So out of the cars that its competition would, you know, be completely correlated with, whether it's in the Stellantis family or not, I still feel like the Milano looks better inside and out than any of those other models, but that might be me being biased. The wheels look really good. Um, obviously we've only seen um, on the configurator the Speciality trim, but keep in mind that a Veloce trim uh, will be out as well, but we saw the Veloce during the launch and that was the one in red, I believe. Um, so, you know, we haven't necessarily seen all the options. I love the wheels though. Um, they look really cool for aerodynamic wheels. Um, so the side profile looks fine to me. I love the serpent on the C pillar and everything like that. Um, you know, alpha male styling cues, they always do well. The back doesn't look that bad to me. It definitely keeps up with the times, you know, um, and when it comes to innovation and moving forward, I definitely think that the back, you know, it's, it's not bad. Okay. So with that said, the front. The front is the big one for everybody. Now, I love the three-piece light signature or the three light signatures uh, for the LEDs look great. The Scudetto up front, that's where the big one is, you guys are going to be talking about. Now, we do have the monochrome center cap for the emblem, which is cool because uh, normally we had that on the wheels, but they might be moving forward with that, taking the color out of the cars and putting the monocolored, uh, or sorry, monotone uh, colored for the emblem on the hood. The Scudetto, though. I don't necessarily, and this is going to be another controversial take, I don't necessarily like the one that says the Alfa Romeo script on a Scudetto because it seems a little off-center and out of place. I would have rather them keep that blank. But the one with the serpent in the center, you guys have to realize that this is Alfa Romeo. A lot of people say that that's a little too much or it might be tacky or whatever. It reminds me of Maserati on the MC20 Cielo giving you the option to put the big trident on the tunnel cover so whenever you raise the top and lower it, you will see the big Maserati trident in your face. Same thing with the Maserati trident 
in the Lexan glass on the back of the coupe version. It's the same thing with Alf Romeo here. It's definitely putting a lot of heritage, you know, over 100 years of heritage, right there in your face. You already know it's an Alfa with the Scudetto, but then you put the Serpent in there. I really like how they integrated it. A lot of people do not like that. I'm actually a fan of that. But again, being built in Poland, and you guys saying that it has French influence, do you feel like, well, that the Alfa Romeo Milano strays too far away from its Italian roots? It's not that it's being produced, you know, hybrid powertrain and electric powertrain. Nobody really cared much about that. It's actually the feel, the looks, and the heritage of the whole Milano itself. Um, what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. Like I said, I'm giving it praise for the most part, but it's tough because I know a lot of people are going against me. They're probably going to say that, you know, um, Alfa Romeo is uh, paying me to say something or like, you know, I don't want to ruin any kind of relationship with them. But again, I'm not, I'm not defending, but I'm not bashing. I'm just telling you my thoughts. And for the most part, they're pretty positive. I, there's some things that I would change, but for the most part, I mean, for what they're doing, what this car is meant for, and that's to sell in volume in order to get those passionate products like the 33 Stradale and maybe like a new GTV or a Duetto or anything like that. You have to put cars out there that sell in numbers. And I think for what they're trying to do for the segment this is for and for what they're trying to accomplish, I think the Milano, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. And I mean, I think that this will be a hit. I'm hoping so overseas because I want Alfa Romeo to do very well so we can continue to get them maybe back in Formula One or maybe we can get those, you know, affordable sports cars and, you know, go from there and continue on to be passionate, Alfisti and Alfista for the brand. So with that said, guys, this is your outlet to drop your comments down below. Um, believe it or not, Alfa Romeo does watch uh, these videos. Probably not all of them, but they'll probably watch this one. Um, and, and say what you got to say. Uh, that was my thoughts, and I want to know yours. So with that said, if you guys did enjoy the video, give the video a big thumbs up. Make sure you guys share it so um, more people can see it. Drop their, you know, um, their thoughts. And make sure you guys check the links in the description. You guys want to help further support me. And also, click the notification bell. You won't miss any of these videos. And then after that... We will see you guys in the next Ron's Rise video. Peace.